On the 14th of October 2021, I noticed a unique meowing coming from the big tree in the front of the property that I didn't recognize. Lo and behold, there was a black and brown cat stuck in the tree. Or at least that's what I initially thought. My initial worry was, oh no, there's a stray cat stuck in a tree. How am I going to get it down? What really cemented this fear was I'd routinely check on this cat and just as I left it, it was still stuck in the tree. Thankfully, my woes were quickly extinguished when it eventually got comfortable enough to climb down the tree on its own. I was an observer at this point, since I wanted the other cats to formally welcome her, so I left them be. The next day I saw the very same cat by the front gate and decided to approach it. What was special about this cat was, unlike the 5 to 7 months it took to earn the trust of my other cats, this cat trusted me immediately and eventually became the friendliest cat I've ever met. And trust me, that is a lot of cats to compete with. Before long, day 3 had passed and this new black and brown cat was clearly a regular and eager to join the club. It just needed a name. Since I had Harry, named after Prince Harry, I naturally settled on Meghan after Meghan Merkel. Very quickly, Meghan became the friendliest, most cuddly cat ever. The other cats hated belly rubs, but not Meghan. She would let me pick her up and rub her soft little belly till she purred herself to sleep. She was absolutely adorable, and I felt blessed that she had chosen me to be her human. She was remarkable, so friendly, loved attention, and was incredibly loyal. It was not uncommon for her to sleep outside my apartment door just waiting for me. I could always count on Megan brushing by my ankles anytime I stood outside. Always. It was honestly my favourite thing about going outside. She genuinely loved and trusted me, and I valued that. Megan was quickly earning the role of favourite cat, beating out Fatty Fat Fat Joe, something she achieved rather effortlessly given how freely she gave her love. This honeymoon phase with Megan, however, unfortunately ended prematurely. Originally, the first sign was that Megan had her inner eyelids always halfway up. A Google search suggested this to be Hawes Syndrome, something that could eventually correct itself in four to six weeks. So I kept track of time and monitored her condition. She ate less than usual, which at first I suspected was due to her not being able to see the food, but at least she was still eating. Believing that the horse syndrome would heal itself in a few weeks, and seeing her eat a portion of her usual daily intake, I was cautious, but not scared. Then the lack of grooming became apparent. I started noticing that Megan would still have some poop stuck to her fur, and snot coming from her nose. She was not in a clean condition. Bear in mind that I was ignorant to the fact at this point that lack of self-grooming was a major red flag. So, in the meantime, I took her inside for the first time, gave her a bath, dried her off, and gave her tons of cuddles as she went to sleep in my bed in my arms. I'm going to keep her in my room until she's dry. Make sure she eats the food with the medicine, the painkillers and stuff. And then, the cat safe painkillers, I did the research. And then, when she's all dry, take her outside, pre-fed. And then she can go and just like be a cat for a bit. Natural medicine, like get the plants around her and all that shit. And then, I'll take her to the vets. Poor little Megan. Look at that, she went from having a really snotty nose and drool and her eyes had horse syndrome. But now, it looks like it's probably just a little, she just needed a little cuddle and a little bath. She's shivering still though, I don't know if you can tell. Oh my god, I love Megan so much. I love this baby. Oh, I love this little baby. 
When Megan was fully dry and she was no longer shivering, I decided to let her back outside because I didn't have a litter tray and I believe she'd be better in a few weeks. So I took her gently outside, placed her on the floor and watched as she quickly ran to the back of the house and into one of the cardboard houses I had made for them. She must still be cold, I thought. After an hour, I checked on my cats and noticed Megan was still tucked away deep in the cardboard house and had snot all over her face. So I wiped her off with a wipe and offered her some food that she rejected. Just in case things got worse, I prepared a cardboard box with towels and food in my room in case she needed overnight care. After another hour or so, I went back outside to see how Megan is doing, but she wasn't there. I looked everywhere and thank God I didn't stop searching for those 30 minutes because eventually, for the last time in her life, she walked up to me from the shadows. To my horror, she was in a horrible state. She had blood coming from her nose and mouth and was seriously ill. I rushed her back inside and cleaned off the blood and gently laid her in a cardboard box in my room. I mean, she seems, she's so lifeless. But she's breathing. Laying her gently in the box is when I knew she was going to die. I could only compare it to dropping a wet towel on the counter from a short distance. She was lifeless. That night, I lay beside her and heard Megan coughing up blood, gargling to breathe, and slowly pass away in my room on the 3rd of February 2022. Just five months from that moment I saw her in the tree. This was the first pet I ever lost as an adult, and it hit me hard. Thankfully, I was teaching online at the time and had enough time to properly bury her in the backyard. I placed some bricks in an M pattern, which I later spray painted white, so the next time Google updates its images for Google Earth, I'll be able to see exactly where my sweet Megan lay. The fallout from her death was evident amongst the community of cats I spent so much time, energy and money to create. Nobody ever went back into the cardboard house, especially not Joe, who would often cuddle Megan there. Joe and Megan were best friends, and they were inseparable. After Megan died, Joe avoided me like the plague for a few months, which was difficult since most of the cuddles and belly rubs came from Megan, and the rest, a small percentage, came from Joe. I longed for that gentle nudge Megan would always give me any time I worked outside. But now, with Megan's absence and Joe avoiding me, the void created by Megan's passing became very noticeable. I couldn't pet them. They didn't approach me, and the magic was gone. The community was disbanded. Thankfully, this trend didn't last long, and after a month or two, Joe slowly let me pet him again. Look, he's letting me pet him again. I think he missed me. Did you miss me, little stinky? Oh, you're so dirty. You were so dirty. He likes me petting him again. <laughs> Megan was loved and cared for, and was part of a safe community that valued her. My takeaway from this is that it's always difficult for someone to lose a beloved pet. But in the end, it's always worth it. So thank you for all the love and memories, Megan. You'll be missed, and I love you. And hey, 
How many stray cats can say they've been mourned by people in the United Arab Emirates, United Kingdom, and Canada? I hope I made your last five months a happy one, especially for a stray. Rest easy, Megan.